So I put this video together to show you how to get started with Caden Live. It is the primary tool I use for editing all of my videos that I post on my YouTube channel. I did previously start out with OpenShot and move quickly into Caden Live. It just has a lot more features and uh, it's just been a great watching the progress of this has become a amazing because it's for an open source project does really well. Now I'm showing you how I normally edit on my three screen layout and we're gonna bring it down though uh, to make the video a little easier to one screen. Now you can save and load layouts in Caden Live, which is pretty slick. Uh, it even customizes, like if you notice, it changed even the spacing on here. So we're gonna go back down to middle screen here. All right, and start the editing. So by default, uh, you've got your video tracks here on the bottom, a couple audio tracks, that's customizable. And even during a project, uh, you can add more or remove them. So if we don't want one, we can delete a track, insert a track. Uh, select current tracks, deselect. So there's, you know, that's for some of the track editing. Now the track that shows is always the one on the top. So if you have several videos you're compositing, the one on the top is the one that shows. So we're just gonna go over some of the basic editing. Um, I'm gonna break down separate videos for each of the more advanced features of Caden Live, uh, cause it's a very big program and video editing is a uh, kind of a daunting thing when you look at how much you can do with it. It's pretty amazing. It's not my full-time job, of course. Uh, so I'm just gonna cover the basics to get you started, like if you wanna shoot an easy video and do some quick edits with it, give you the basic workflow. So as you start out, I run through, and this is a motorcycle video I did the other day, posted on my channel. And so I'm just gonna use that as some of the source material. I have uh, some of them named. My general workflow is create the videos and drop them into a folder, give each of them a name to relate to what they were and away they go. Now, if you notice my drop them in, there's a little rendering thing that ran across here. Uh, what that's doing is rendering the audio because this is a feature that Caden Live that really got me to switch there was when you're trying to edit a tutorial or video, you kind of want to know where all the clips are in terms of where you wanna cut. Well, I wanna cut out parts that where I'm not talking and uninteresting and seeing the audio at the bottom makes that really easy. It's also really easy when I'm doing uh, a software tutorial. There's always parts where the software is downloading and, um, and waiting and no one really wants to watch that. So I just quit talking and you look for a spot where it's flat because it's recording basically no audio, just recording the video. And I'll either speed that up, uh, which is my preferred way to do it, or if it's just too long because it takes 30 minutes to load windows or something on a demo, um, you just cut those parts out. And that's really what we're gonna cover today is just how to basically cut and paste your video around and clip out the parts you don't want so you can create a final product. So using this video as an example, obviously the first thing I do is reach around the camera and hit record and I don't say anything. Uh, the basic controls, which I do have a missing icon, is we have our cut tool, which is the razor tool, which is X, and the selection tool. Now those are my two primary tools that you need to use to edit video all the time. And they are S and X on the keyboard or you can click them here. I don't know why my icon's missing that came with an update. Besides the missing icons is a really uh, amazing project because the, the amount of video editing you can do on this. So zooming in and out, if I hold the control key, I'm compressing time or uncompressing time, just for the preview purposes. It does nothing to the video, it's just so we can see all the things. So this is a four minute clip and this one's a nine minute clip. If we see we add it, now the video got longer and you can see in here your time indexes for how long this video is for each part. I do turn this to none, but you may want to turn this on like preview, depending on the speed of your computer. Uh, these are different like rendering options for when you're compositing the tracks. Also, when you actually go to render, make sure this is at none. Uh, it'll make rendering go a lot faster. But my computer, like this is a 4K video, so it's a little bit more jagged and less fluid. Uh, I'm just running out of CPU power to do that. So back to the timeline here. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit and uh, you also have this little slider down here that tells you what zoom level you're at. So when we're editing though, we wanna find the spot we're gonna edit. So we got the end point here. This is the very beginning of the video and I don't really care about me reaching on the camera. I'm not saying anything. So let's zoom in and then you got to grab it and slide it so we can watch it. I made it zoomed in a little bit too far. You can zoom right in down to the frame level and I can see that little represents the noise the motorcycle's making in the background. And I said snow date. So why don't we start it out and hit X or I could click this and we're going to cut out the beginning. Now the highlighted clip is a selected clip. It by default is going to select this one. We're going to press the S tool because we want to select this clip because I don't want it. 
and you can right click and uh, mess with the clip, group it, delete, selected item, but I just hit the delete key because it's faster. So we're gonna hit this and hit delete. And now we got a gap at the beginning of the video and I can drag this over. Another option is you can just hit remove space. That way if you're zoomed in and you're, you want it, the remove space brings you right back to the beginning of that next clip or whatever clip it butts up against. In this case, it's not butting up against the clip, it's just the beginning of the video. So now we watch it again. So I say snow day and I'm excited. And I said, okay, I'm falling. And that's where this ends because after this, I already know, I hand the camera off to my friend. Which is not really interesting to watch. I'm gonna turn the volume down so you don't get too annoyed by the volume, but you, I can't hear when I'm going through this. Uh, it does make a, kind of an annoying noise when you jump around the clip like this. It will uh, get kind of annoying. So let's look at the first part of the clip where something actually happens. So we walk around in my backyard and the first clip where something actually happens is, uh, there we go, right here. So we're gonna cut it right there. Now we have this giant piece in the middle. This was the unwanted part and highlight it hitting, I pressed S. I highlighted it by clicking on it after pressing S because if I have it on X, it just keeps cutting the clip up. Uh, control Z works too for you can control Z things like to undo it or undo. So if you don't know what you did, you can always just go and undo and redo that is in here. So we're gonna hi press S, highlight this, click, delete. And now we can do the remove space and we go from this and it hard cuts into that. Now let's say right there's where we find this one. So we wanna cut it, let's say we go here and this is where we want our second cut. So we're gonna cut this piece to here. Now, between here and here was a hard cut. So it just kinda of jumps in there. Maybe you don't want it to hard cut. So we actually drag this up and over. And what this does is now the two clips are over each other. Remember the top clip is the one that shows. Now the audio automatically just plays both at the same time, but it's still a hard transition. And we're gonna zoom in a little further so you can see what I'm doing. The corner of the video, you get a little finger and that adds a transition. That is the easy way to do it. Now you can go to transitions and there's lots of different transition options uh, where you can do wipes and slides and uh, fun dissolves. But this simple one is just clicking there and you now watch when we fit, it'll go and fade between the clips. And it just comes down to personal preference for your editing. Maybe that faded nice for you. Maybe going, you know, I'd like a longer fade. Well, if you want a longer fade, and we're gonna drag it, I just put them more over each other, and the fade takes longer. And we can go crazy with it. And now it fades like that. So that just comes down to personal preference, but it's pretty easy to do. Um, it's supposed to, but doesn't always lock to it. So you just gotta drag these here. Now, any of the transitions always go in between here. And if you go and click on the transition, there's a reverse on it, dissolve, which track you're messing with. All that's kind of default to you, but you can go in and customize it. You can go in and mess with that all you want. So that's really simple how you take two clips and fade them together, which is generally what you want. It looks a little bit nicer when you do that. So, all right, I'm at the back of the yard. And like I said, maybe there's where I'm kind of out of range and it's, well, it's less interesting. You wanna see something happening. So then we're gonna bring this clip over and figure out where the piece of this that looks interesting. And we're gonna go, let's say a lot further down to where I'm closer to the camera, like right here. So we take this clip and we'll cut it. And then we're gonna take this and delete it. And we'll bring these over here. Now it's sticky. So if you notice it stops pretty easy, it will go past, but it stops there. That way they're assuming that's what you want is to do that. Now I'm just using the control key again to zoom in and out uh, as I wanna get closer to it. So maybe here, and the same thing, I clip the corner and we went from a hard transition to a little bit softer of a transition, maybe give it a few more pixels. Like I said, this comes down to personal preference of how you think the fade should look. Or if you think there should be no fade, you can just put the clips like this right next to each other and it just jumps in, it right into the next one. Pretty easy to do. So, we can see the video. Okay, that one was kind of cool. And once again, I'm far away. So let's cut this out because this goes back to uninteresting. And let's do something that's a little bit closer up. Now, eh, maybe I think I think I did a closer up one down here so we can just run through the video. There we go. 
So we'll start it maybe here. So we're deleting this out. And you can leave it on the same track. You can put on whatever track you want. Uh, for simplicity, we're not really doing any more fades. You know how to do that now. Uh, we'll just let it jump to that next part. All right, now that seemed kind of cool. Let's do something like add an effect to this. So if we take this and cut it, because it's right after it happens, and we'll drag this one up. Now the reason I dragged it up is because we want to add an effect. Now you can go to the effects here, or you can right click and add effect. Both both ways work. Uh, the nice thing about when you add the effects is you can search for them. So we look for speed, which is the uh, speed control effect. Now, before applying a speed effect, save the video because you can screw this up. I've screwed this up many times. If you're in the speed effect and you have it down on the same track and you make the track slower, we're going to take this track and bring it down to 25% speed. Well, the tr track is four times as long. When that happens, which is also, it does leave the audio in, so you can decide whether or not you want to mute it, which is also uh, under the audio. So if you add effect, we want audio correction, because if you go just to the audio effects, there's pages and pages. We have one just dedicated to audio channels or audio corrections, which means you can just control the gain or the volume on a keyframe or mute. And keyframe means you can control the volume on a frame by frame basis. So the first 100 frames is this volume level, next 100 frames that. Uh, that's more advanced. We'll do maybe another video just on that. But maybe we just want to mute this because it's going to make a different noise because we've changed the speed of the video. So we added a mute. Now we can see when we click on this, there's here we're on our properties and there's no effects on this, but this one has a speed of 25 and a mute option on there. So this allows us to do this. Now, like I said, if you would have expanded this video, you could have caused a problem. It may have given an error. Sometimes Caden Live just goes, I'm going to crash or goof up because you tried to make a video longer with no room to make the video longer. So I'm trying to listen to the properties. Basically, don't do it. Drag things that are on speed to their own track and make sure there's plenty of room to either make them bigger or smaller. Same thing if we made it at 400%, it's going to be much smaller. But let's do it at slow motion. So we're going to say 25%. And I can drag this back and forth. I like being precise and typing in the numbers. So now we come here and it's a slow motion effect that we get on this. Now, the other thing that's going on, because I didn't do a fade or anything on this, it just goes into normal motion because it's a cut out of this into here. So it just goes right into normal speed motion. And I use the, the motion a lot, especially, like I said, when you're loading software and things like that for some of the tutorial videos, I take the speed. I generally am just speeding it up a lot. Um, we know it's going to you know, do the thing. We just don't want to wait for it to do the thing. So we just speed that part of the video up. And I usually have to add mute because if not, it sounds like chipmunks squeaking or something because uh, there's voices in the background. And my time lapses are that way too. Even though they're a time lapse to begin with, sometimes there, there's eight minutes of video and I only want three minutes of it. And you can speed it up uh, to that uh, to you know fit the video you're doing. So that's how you do the... Uh, basic slow motion this and it looks pretty cool so that just kind of gets you started with the video editing and finally we'll say hey cool we want to add a title to this well it does have a built-in title clip editor you that's a I hit uh, add title a uh, template title you can save templates in there so this is basic text editing and it lets you choose the font it lets you choose some of there and we'll say double click it motorcycle over here. All right, so now we have a title clip. Now by default, the title clip isn't named. So we can rename it here, motor. So now I know what this title clip is. I drag it over to the video. And what it's unfortunately done is just do this. And then we want to add a transition to it. We'll just do this in a fine transition. It's kind of weird. Sometimes it, I guess maybe the latest version, they stopped doing this when you add the title clip. It was auto doing this. I must have an option disabled. But what you need is a transition, like a compositing one. And what this lets you do, and I'll play the video back again here, it puts the text over there. Now to re-edit the clip, maybe I don't want it there. Edit clip. Edit clip. And when you click that, you're up here. And then you can actually just, let's say we're going to double click to re-edit it, or we can drag it down here. And now in the video, it's down there. So we just right click, edit clip, drag it up here, and it shows up up there. Let's just talk about the video and finish it real quick here by saying, all right, we're gonna go here, 
we have this part of the video and we want to go through and delete the rest and this is our ending. The last thing you may want to do on an ending is you go, you know, you want the ending to fade out, not just end. If you click on the corner of a video, that automatically adds a fade out to it. And then you actually are just sliding the fade out back and forth for how long you want it to take to transition out. So I, that's transitioning far. You can also, once you've done that, when you click on a clip and go to the properties, you can control the duration in seconds over here. So usually just a couple second fade out is fine. Now instead of the video just abruptly stopping, it fades away. All right, so we have our video set to the fade we want. It uh, ends properly. Let me turn it down a little bit so it's not noisy. Um, it ends properly. We're like, okay, that fade out works for me. Final thing to get your video done is obviously to render it. And that basically is composite everything into the final video. Um, when we click the render, uh, one of the things I commented before, make sure this is set to none. Like I said, I don't know the details, but I do know that when that's set on there, it renders dramatically slower. And we're going to choose MP4 as an option, and we're gonna click the more options. Now, it remembers this from last time I've used this, it remembers the quality when I've used MP4 and the number of threads. Now this coincides to the number of processors. So I have an eight core system. So this lets me go all the way up to eight, which means utilize all eight CPU threads or eight CPU cores for uh, rendering, which makes rendering theoretically eight times faster, but uh, it's a lot faster obviously running with more cores on the CPU. Now, uh, I don't know why it's a little hard to read, but the stupid um, font decided to use a low color one there. Not a big deal. This is our test. I'm gonna type test there. You can see I highlighted it. And then we're gonna render the project. Uh, the default 23 and 160 are generally fine, but you can tweak it to lower, higher qualities. And it's got a few different options in there. But for me, for uploading to YouTube, uh, MP4 works great. And we're going to render to file. And that throws it in the job queue here. And I can see the CPU load going up while it's rendering. It doesn't take too long to render. You can see it just pounding away at all the CPU cores though. Uh, this is one of the reasons I went to liquid cooling on my computers because once you render for a while and some of the, you know, this is only a few minutes of a minute video and it's taking, you know, this may say, remember, some of them take a lot longer to render, especially like, a, let's say a 20 or 30 minute video with many, many clips or something I pull in that's 4K for my drone and render it that way, you're gonna get a lot higher of a rendering time. Uh, but it's uh, just about done here. All right, and now it's done rendering. It tells you the time it took to render, which was a minute three, and it's got the location where I chose to save it, which I accidentally clicked the cache file uh, to save it in air. But now it's done and ready to be uploaded, and I can save my project and close. And uh, that's it to from start to finish for dragging some files in and outputting a uh, rendering job. One of the other options you have is you can actually tell it to shut down your computer after rendering. Uh, oh, and even while it's rendering, even though we may be in a rendering video, and I'll just show you to kick it off rendering again, go ahead and replace it. Uh, you can still move things around. It's not, you can still go through, obviously you don't change anything. I'm not sure what it would do if you started changing things while it's rendering, if it would render the change or render the original, but um, you can still move things around while it's doing that and uh, see it rendering, but you can also tell it to shut down the computer when you're done and also click the save button, even while it's rendering, that way it saves. And it's actually saving it, uh, the rendering settings as well. So when I reopen this video, it'll remember the last settings. So if I customize any of the settings in here, it'll remember it. It always remembers the uh, number of processors by default too, but it doesn't remember the file name, obviously when it's a new video, because each new video needs a new file name. Uh, so that's it. That's for uh, start to finish, getting going with Caden Live. And uh, hopefully this was helpful to you. I'm going to break down some uh, more advanced videos uh, for each component. That way it's a nice reference uh, how to do one specific thing. Because um, you may not do it very often and it's handy to watch a tutorial on how to do that one specific thing when you have to. So thanks again. And if you like the content here, like and subscribe. Appreciate it.